the season for the Sun Devils has been rocky, sitting at a 3-3 record so far. But coming off a sweep, Greg Powers and the Devils are poised to strike. It's round two of ASU versus Quinnipiac with the Bobcats entering Tempe. It's the Devils and the Bobcats here on Pac-12+. Hello and welcome into Cronkite Sports Spotlight here on Pac-12+. I'm Jack Lauderay, and beside me is Rachel Phillips. And Rachel, we have a great show coming up today before this matchup between Arizona State and Quinnipiac. That's right, Jack. Kicking things off, we have a very special guest analyzing this ASU team. And on top of that, we're going to be taking a look at exactly what ASU needs to do to win this clash. And to finish it off, we will take a look at a pair of brothers on this team and what it's like for them to hit the ice together. But before we dive into that, Mike McQuay joins us with a very special guest to give their insights on this ASU team. Thank you, Jack. The voice of the Frozen Four ESPN, John Butchgrass, joins us today. John, let's get right into it. Let's you do it. You've seen Quinnipiac up close for numerous years. Since, tw since 2013, they have made two appearances in the Frozen Four. How does this year's squad stack up to previous years? Well, it's pretty much the same old Quinnipiac squad. Rand Pecknold has built quite the culture there in, uh, in Hamden, Connecticut. Uh, starting from really nothing and building this team up now to almost a national power. As you mentioned, it's been a great decade for them. Haven't quite got that national title yet. Lost to Yale and Pittsburgh, lost to North Dakota and where Tampa, you got it. And so it's, it's a great program. They play fast, they're on you, they usually outshoot you, and that'll be the same this year. This is a tough test uh, for uh, the Sun Devils. They need it, they need at least one win, and this is a great chance. Of course, the team they lost to in last year's tournament, uh, Quinnipiac 2-1, to one. Um, they get a great chance now to get a big, big win against them, at least one. Uh, so yeah, this is a big weekend. Absolutely, and now the Quinnipiac Bobcats are averaging about three goals a game, ranked 15th in the nation. But on the other side, it's only the third season for the Sun Devils at Division I. Last year, ASU made their first NCAA appearance, but fell short to Quinnipiac in the first round. What is the talk around college hockey about the Sun Devils doing it here in Tempe? Well, certainly it's been really the talk, especially last year when they got out to the good start, got some of those big early season wins against good programs, which is what you need. Um, obviously, they're, they're a team that doesn't belong to a conference, so they're going to have to get those wins and, uh, and build up their computer points that way in the pairwise rankings. So they got people's attention early. They had the great goaltender who was the big difference this year, not there this year, so they'll have to overcome that. But yeah, I mean, again, making those early season statements, beating big time programs, getting the attention of people, maybe jumping on them and surprising them. So they certainly have their respect now. It'll be different this year. Uh, they have a good schedule and teams will be ready this year. And Greg Powers mentioned that last year they were able to fly under the radar, but this year they're kind of the talk of the, talk of the town. And also ASU's already lost half of their games this season. What is at stake for the Sun Devils this weekend and how could it influence a future tournament bid? And like I said, you've got to rack up those points. The Minnesota State would have been a great chance to get one of those. They got swept there, lost one to Mercyhurst. They split that series, as you mentioned. Um, they swept Air Force, but Air Force hasn't won a game yet. That's not going to help you. But they have a good schedule. You mentioned, obviously, Quinnipiac this weekend. Uh, Denver comes to town. They'll go to Wisconsin. Uh, and then you look at a situation like the RIT Tigers in Rochester, New York. They're coming uh, to play Arizona State, and they're off to a great start. So that's good. Uh, if you're the Sun Devils and you're looking to get up those computer points, you want to play teams who are playing well. So they're off to a slow start uh, in terms of the computer, but obviously it's very early. But whether it's this weekend against Quinnipiac, uh, a game against Denver, you win one of those, and a couple surprises along the way, and they still have time to, to, to rack up their points and build up that resume, but, but they got to get going. Um, this is a big one this weekend. They know they'd love to get one. I'm sure Coach Powers is really delivering that hard. That first period is probably going to be a menacing first period on both sides. It'll be a great college hockey environment and a really a great college hockey uh, contest this weekend. Mm. And as forward, Demetrius Kumanzis has mentioned that during the Air Force game, they're only first focused on the first period and playing a complete game. So clearly that is something they need to start off as well, as you mentioned before. But thank you, John, for joining us. I appreciate the time of day. And Rachel, back to you. Incredible insight you won't get anywhere else from John Bucci-Gross. And now our very own Julian Peras is going to take a closer look at exactly what ASU plans to focus on for this matchup. 
It was back in March of 2019 that the Sun Devils had their first taste of the NCAA tournament. But this weekend, the Arizona State Sun Devils will be taking on the very team that eliminated them from the postseason last year. Nervously to get on the ice. Here's a shot and a score! They came, they saw, but were far from conquering. And Arizona State has not forgotten about that feeling of defeat. You know, you don't forget about stuff like that. I, mean, I have a couple buddies on the scene that were on that team last year, and I'm just excited to uh, really take it to them this weekend. The Sun Devils will be coming fresh off a of bye week and ready to hit the ice once again. For Dimitrios Kumonti says their matchup against Quinnipiac will guide them in the right direction. That set us back a little bit, but we're back even, and this game's going to be a big game to get us on a good path to um, back to where we were last year. Head coach Greg Powers said that the Bobcats run a program like few can, which is why he also stated that the Sun Devils will need to bring their A game. Incredibly well coached, incredibly well structured, um, really, really deep forward group that they have. Um, so, so we're going to we're gonna have to absolutely be at our very best to beat them. But the players say they're ready to bring the heat and compete. It was the best year this program ever had, and, and we were this close from making it that much more special, and these guys took it from us, so we're ready. The Sun Devils are currently 500, going up against the Bobcats team that is 4-1. We don't know what to expect from these two teams, other than the fact that it will be a show this weekend. Reporting from Oceanside, Julian Paras, WCSN. While Quinnipiac and ASU are familiar opponents, both of these teams look very different than they did in last year's NCAA tournament. The Sun Devils lost five seniors at the end of last season, including two of their top penalty killers in Anthony Croston and Dylan Holman. They also lost starting goaltender Joey Decord. Meanwhile, the Bobcats graduated two of last season's top three point scorers. Even with the younger roster, ASU head coach Greg Powers knows Quinnipiac will come in well prepared. They lost arguably their team three top D, they were all high-end kids, but, but they have a really good deed. They're just not as experienced as they had last year. Um, so I think they got a little bit more top-heavy up front and, and probably are figuring things out in the back end, but by no means are they weak in the back end. They're just a lot different than they were last year in the back end. The Devils are motivated and ready to go, but this Quinnipiac team is no stranger to the spotlight in competition either. R. Reagan Smith dives into the history of their program. When ASU faces off against Quinnipiac tonight, they'll be playing against a program that has cemented itself as one of the NCAA elites. Backed for the last 26 years by head coach Rand Packnold, their hockey history dates back to 1975 and their NCAA D1 history to 1998, where the then called Braves finished with a 26-6-2 record. However, it wasn't until 2002 that Quinnipiac qualified for their first NCAA tournament as MAAC conference champions. Jump ahead 10 years to the 2012-13 season, and QU found itself with its first overall number one overall ranking in both the regular season and the NCAA tournament. That year, the team lost in the national championship game to bitter down-the-road rival Yale. Three years later, the Bobcats made yet another championship appearance, losing 5-1 to one to North Dakota. And in 2019, well, we know the story. We certainly do, Reagan. A story not as familiar is the fascinating brotherly bond inside the Sun Devils locker room. Cronkite sports reporter Michael Gutnick takes a look. Here a chance, Pasichnuk gives it up to his brother and he scores! Bonneville, Alberta. A small town with a population of 6,000 people. That allows O'Connor Nearly one third of the population size can fit right into the town's only hockey venue, RJ Lalonde Arena. It's home to the Bonneville Pontiacs and home to Brinson and Steen Pashnik's humble hockey beginnings. Blue line, he scores and it's 4-0. When we made it to the North Final for the first time in uh, Pontiac history, I think that was just uh, so special. The emotion that the guys felt when we won that game and just everyone coming together as a team was just incredible. Playing hockey at Arizona State was off the beaten path, but head coach Greg Powers knew it was the perfect fit. I knew that it was a fit on that first call and I could tell that we were going to get them and you know the, the idea of having two close-knit brothers that wanted to build something together um, was, was really appealing to us at the time. They've uh, more than exceeded expectations. They're true builders and founding fathers of our program. Kids that I know I'll be close with for the rest of my life. Brinson became a co-captain, putting up record-setting numbers last season. 
Steen's physical net front presence and persistent mindset have turned him into a punishing power forward and key special teams component. Punishes, he scores! Steen, passionate. Over the summer, the Pashniks have come closer than ever before, training together at San Jose's development camp and winning the Renaissance Cup championship in Beijing. Experiencing that uh, development camp with my little brother, you know, who's also my best friend, is uh, definitely something that was even better. Me and Steen have got to travel the world together. I say it every time, like I'm so grateful God has put me and Steen in this position. No matter where their careers take them, there is one thing for certain. Brinson and Steen will be brothers for life, on and off the ice. Reporting in Tempe, I'm Michael Gutnick, Cronkite Sports. Such an interesting story from Michael, and you know, I mean, those two are going to remember this for the rest of their lives, you know, th this bond that they've created, they will cherish forever. Of course, and that bond will be put to the test when they take on Quinnipiac in just a few moments. That's all from us here in the studio today. For Rachel Phillips, I'm Jack Lauderay. We send you out now to Oceanside Ice Arena for Puck Drop here on Pac-12+. Plus.